Looks like we're live. <laughs> Redirecting to YouTube. Mine says me on the stream. Yeah. <laughs> we are live. Welcome everyone. <laughs> That's so fun. <laughs> Cool. Looks like we're live. <laughs> so, Lale, are you directing to YouTube? Now I have to read that. Okay, go ahead. Cool. Hello, everyone. My name is Venus Castleberg. This is Lale Hancock. <laughs> and <clears throat> um, welcome to A Taste of Business Done Different. <clears throat> Excuse me. How is everyone today? Thank you guys so much for being here. How exciting. Did she unmute yourself? <laughs> there she is. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Oh, wow. I love that we have people in the room, in the Zoom room. We have translators here, and then we have people all around the world who are watching us via YouTube or another Zoom. And we got more people joining, so just letting people in. Awesome. So Lolly and I were playing, we're both um, Joy of Business. Um, certified facilitators. We both love business. <laughs> and uh, we were playing with the idea of like, hey, let's do a class together. And then we're like, well, hey, maybe there's people out there that don't even know what business done different is. And they might like to get a taste of it and find out what it's all about. So Lale, why don't you share a little bit about kind of your background, how you came to become a business facilitator and maybe what's your take on business done different yeah for me it's actually different I love business and have since the minute I think I was born <laughs> I, I remember being seven years old and talking with my dad about different things that were going on in his business and when I was a teenager at summer when I could be you know I don't know, playing with other kids or doing other things in camps. I did some of that. I actually would go to work with my dad and really work with him through, um, you know, his business. And he was in the textile business. So he was in the clothing business and he would design and manufacture his own clothes. Mm -hmm. um, and he had a fabric background. So it was really interesting, like learning like the things that I love shopping, you know, trying different things, like the ins and outs of the business. And then like the interconnected pieces, you know, like the people that, yes, they're producing it and they're in this other country called Taiwan or somewhere else. And then like, how do you bring it from over there to where we were in California? And then like the people that were involved in like, okay, now the merchandise is here and where does it go? So there was this whole chain of different people who were involved in the business and it just always got me so excited and i spent i've spent so far about 30 years in business and different kinds of businesses corporate not for profit startups and i love it cuz now i decided today i'm actually starting my third business here in portugal so talk about business done different during the quarantine it's opened up doors for us to actually explore things that maybe in the past we wouldn't even consider before and eight years ago i came to find access consciousness and joy of business is one of those specialties with access consciousness and like the minute i heard about this specialty the minute i read the book it was almost like my whole life someone finally found words to describe how I felt about business. That it wasn't this A plus B equals C, that it was this whole engagement of people, systems, you know, and communicating with businesses in such a different way. And back then there was no facilitator program. 
it was just Simone Millis's, you know, traveling around the world, sharing the tools. And I knew that one day there's going to be the ability for me to actually be a facilitator of this. And uh, I was right. It happened. And I couldn't wait to just get started and just share more of that with the world. And, you know, joy of business doesn't mean that you even have to be laughing all day. It's nothing like that. But it's really finding what are things that you enjoy, the things that actually make your heart sing, the things that make you get out of bed. And what if they can be a different contribution to your life and to the world than you ever imagined before? So I've got to say, I love the tools and I love sharing it with the world. <laughs> that is so fun. Thank you for that, Lolly. Yeah, and you know, you touched on something too, and this is actually something that people just don't conceive of is like business done different is really also being willing and a, like choosing to do what you love to do. Like we love talking about businesses and money and like all of that is super fun for us, right? It's like we're doing what we love to do. And there's an ease to it. It doesn't even feel like work. <laughs> it's like we get to play all day. Right? So um, I just love that, that we could play um, and it doesn't have to be this dollar per hour and working hard for money. Well, actually, can you talk a little more? Because I know a little more about your personal story. Mm -hmm. and how you might have in the past had that point of view about business. So like, what was it for you that kind of shifted your mindset of like what business was and ways that you could grow your business beyond what you had imagined before? Thanks, Holly. Yes, I definitely have been a work hard <laughs> the dollar per hour. As a matter of fact, my background a little bit is um, I, I'm middle, I would say middle class, you know, I came from, we had some money, not a lot of money. Um, but my dad at one point told me, well, if you can't find work, you can always work at McDonald's. <laughs> I don't know if I went into like, there's no way in the world I'm ever working for McDonald's <laughs> like resistance to my dad, but I have not ever worked for McDonald's. I have almost always worked for myself. However, in working for myself, it became very hard because it was like I was a massage therapist for years and I can only see so many people in a day with these two hands, right? So for me, it started to see like, it seemed like I could never get ahead because there was only so much I could do personally. But then I came across Access Consciousness seven years ago and it just like starting to ask the questions joy of business the book was my second book that i read with access consciousness and that's when i started to say there's some other possibility here now i wouldn't say that i flipped it on a dime <laughs> I'd, say, I'd say it it's still a work in progress there's still times where i go to like oh i gotta get this done this is a have to i should um and and then i'm like wait where's the fun in that? Am I having fun with what I'm doing? Am I, you know, slow down, take a breath. You don't have to like push through anything, but sometimes you have to remember to pause and ask a question, right? Access consciousness is all about asking questions. So if you're new to us, new to access, um, you may, <clears throat> this, it encourages us to ask questions so and never act as if we have the answer and questions open up more possibilities answers shut down possibilities right so it was it, it's a continuing of like well what else is possible here um what else can i be and do different here that i've never done before and like asking those questions always opens up new possibility and then I will say for myself personally, um, if I'm not having fun, I have this like imaginary stop sign in my head. Stop, <laughs> I'm not having fun. What, what changed? <laughs> so, so then I'm like, okay, so what question can I ask here? How can I change this? Um, 
but just being willing to even look at it. I love Gary Douglas said this, and he said that if you're honest with yourself, you can change anything. And if you, if you lie to yourself, if you keep lying to yourself, you can't change one thing because you're not being honest with yourself. So if you, if you feel heaviness or you feel contraction or you feel like you're not having fun, stop, ask a question. What is it that you're aware of? Where are you functioning from? Being honest with yourself, maybe, and this is a big one for people, is like, I really had to look at my hate for money. I hated money, right? Well, if you hate money, do you think money wants to come hang out with you? <laughs> Probably not so much. So, but if you change your point of view and you really find gratitude for money, then money wants to hang out with you more and more. So it's, but I had to be willing to say, I hate money, even though I knew the, a better answer or what in this reality would say the right answer is, oh no, I love money. But that wasn't actually true. So when I owned that I hated money, then I was able to change my money situation. And that's where Lolly actually had a big hand in um, as well. So I don't know if we're going to talk about money today, but that was just a little. <laughs> Well, and I also want to share that we do have people here on this English Zoom with us. So if you guys have a question, please feel free to unmute and ask your questions. We also have a chat at the bottom of the Zoom that you can click. Mm -hmm. And then on the YouTube, um, Venus is going to be checking for anything you guys are sharing there. If you'd like to ask any questions from the YouTube itself, um, you're welcome to ask us questions. We're together less than an hour at this point, probably 40 more minutes. So we're not going to have a lot of time to bring people on for a long facilitation of what's going on in their life or business. But if you have themes and other things that you'd like to learn more about, we're happy to answer them. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I wanted to kind of bring forth a little more in terms of what you were talking about, Venus, is that I think there, there's a lot of things we learn from our families. We learn from our teachers. We learn from society. We learn from this reality of like what business even is, you know, like there's a lot of points to views of like, hey, if you do this, therefore you have a business. But if you work for someone, then that doesn't mean you have a business. Like there's all these rules and regulations. So our starting place, and if you guys are looking to actually expand the businesses that you work with or you are the current owner of, it starts first with getting rid of whatever it is you've defined as business. You know, because anything that you define, what you do is, it's like you put a wall, you put a box around that definition, and the business cannot do anything else beyond that. So all you're going to see, your mindset will be the business is this small business, it currently only supports these kinds of people. So all the other clients that want to come into this business, they can't. They can't see you and you can't see them because that energetic wall is there. But when you start to actually, and I recommend this every day, like if you guys are willing to really play with the businesses and business, if you wake up in the morning, guys, the business of your life is a business. You know, you have as the, the, the founder of Joy Business, her name is Simone Millicis. She's this incredible powerhouse. And she says, if you wake up and you have blood running through your stream, then you are in business. Now, once again, if your definition was, I don't, I didn't go incorporate this legally, I don't have a business, then that's a different story. It comes back in your head. Mm -hmm. But if we're willing to actually be like, you know what, what if my business, what if I have multiple businesses? One of them is that I work with this organization. One of them is that one of my hobbies, I love to paint, as I know someone on this Zoom loves to paint. What if that's one of their areas, but it's their revenue stream. It's one of these businesses that is there to support them, their life and their living and includes money, okay? And then when you start to make it be a clean slate, so all those expectations, projections, conclusions you've made about your business, what it is, what it's not, who can and cannot be a client, 
and what amount of revenue you are allowed and not allowed to receive. Would you guys be willing, like, just let that go and destroy and create all those structures that you've put in place that even allow that to exist? Yes? Okay, cool. Because what we do is when we let it go, you let the business breathe again. You allow, the business has its own consciousness. And you know that moment when you got excited about this job or you got excited about, yes, I'm going to start my own business? That's because that consciousness was playing with you, was inviting you to its energy and wanted to come and be alive in physical form. So what if you no longer had to work for the business and now you could allow you to receive from the business and allow the information sharing, that gifting and receiving between you and the business to actually happen beyond what you can imagine? Cool. Yeah. So for me, I love businesses. So I just ask them questions every day. Like, who are you? <laughs> who or what do you want to add to you today? Because then you also allow the business to guide you on what does it require today? Where do you need to go? Who do you need to talk to? And go from there. So Venus, I can tell there's something you're sparked and ready to share there. So <laughs> what is it? <laughs> Well, I, I think that you started to touch on it too, because it's like what the way that you see things is how it shows up for you. So what we, we say in Access Consciousness is your point of view creates your reality. So if you have the point of view that business is hard, it's going to be difficult, then that's obviously what you're going to start to create. But if you start to look at like all well, business, maybe you don't see it as joyful right now, but if you could start to ask those questions, then you can start to change your point of view that, wow, I'm actually having fun, that there's joy to this, there's, right? So um, it's really being willing to look at like, what is my point of view? And then destroy and uncreate it, like Lala said, so that you can have, create something fresh and new. Mm -hmm. And what if what you have to bring to the world is unlike anything else that's out there? There's nobody else in the world, one, that's like you or that can, is going to bring what you are here to bring. Even if you're doing something similar to somebody else, you're so different. Lale and I both facilitate business done different. We're different though. So we bring a different flavor. We bring different magic. We bring different possibilities because of who we are. So what is it that, that, that you have to offer? and gift to the world that is unlike anybody else and anything that doesn't allow you to see that magic that you be would you be willing to let that go and destroy and uncreate it awesome. you know it's so funny because when we talk about the gift of you or the gift you bring to the business like so often people are like but wait there's somebody else in my neighborhood there's somebody else in my town there's somebody else who does exactly what i do and i have to go into competition i have to lower my prices so that you know they're not um their prices aren't lower than mine and people go into this cycle of what they need to do to be in business but the business and you have an energy. There's this co-creation of contributive energy. And how you bring your clients in is actually through the energy that you're being. So when you're stressed and you're like, I hate my business, my business didn't make money for me today. Like when you go into those places of judgment, that's that energy you're actually sending out to your clients. You're sending that out into the world. So when someone sees your ad or someone sees your post or what, however you're sharing that information out, they will immediately be turned off. Immediately, they feel this energy being pushed at them and saying, there's something wrong here. It, it's not going to help me. Like all those thoughts, feelings that you had in your head, all that was your mindset, you now share that voice of the business out in the world. But when you go the opposite, 
like you're willing to say, you know what? I know there's things that, ah, you know, could have gone better yesterday. But every day you're like, I'm gonna let go of yesterday and just be grateful. Grateful for everything, the good, the bad, the ugly. And now what else is possible? Hey business, who or what would you like to add to you today? Because that's when you invite the creativity, you invite that energy of generative, creative energy that draws people in. And what it does is it draws you in. <laughs> it gets you out of the boring mode that you have the same business yesterday. So you're boosting your body and you have this energy that's like ready to be shared, not from a force of push, but now from a flow out into the world. And then people just randomly come in. It's amazing. How does it get better than that? <laughs> Yeah. That's beautiful. And Lolly, um, Alyssa from YouTube is asking, can a relationship be a business? Mm, I wonder what you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, most of us treat uh, our personal relationships, our business relationships as um, unhealthy businesses. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to know if you were, see, you know, I want to talk about the money because it has to come up here. Okay. Most people create their business because they want money. They created thinking it's going to fund their life and things of that sort. Yes. The business can do that. But imagine you, you are this infinite space, energy, and consciousness. You are just this massive thing that has no end point to you. Okay. When you put all your energy into one place, that business, and you're like, why aren't you giving me what I need? Why aren't you bringing me the money? You're like, like, you're like slapping it. You're being so unkind to it. It doesn't even know what to do. But when you're like, you know what? One of the ways that I am going to fund my life, fund the adventures of my life, fund being a contribution to the world, when you start making these be revenue streams, you allow everything, including the trees, to be one of the sources of contribution, which is gifting and receiving, okay? Then you allow that to contribute to you, to the business, to this, to this, to this, to this. So then now you're not relying on one source, which usually you make you the source, not the business, by the way. You now expand it to where now you're allowing so many things in this magical universe to be your partner in business. Mm -hmm. So whether it's those relationships, mm -hmm. you know, I have kids, I'm a conscious parent, conscious kids facilitator too. And I say, one of the things we tell parents all the time is you're so ready to go do something for your kids. Are you willing to allow your kids to make you money? Like it, we think it's this like, they physically give you money. No, kids are this generative bubble filled joy and anything they desire, they bring into their lives. So if you're willing to also allow your children to be one of those revenue streams, I wonder how much more your life and the business will grow. <laughs> so money is joy. Money plays at the high frequency where joy, gratitude and everything else is. When you are upset, when you're blaming your business, when you're in that lack or scarcity mode, you will attract nothing more than that energy of that point of view. So guess what? Money's here and your point of view is here when you're being all pissed off and everything is horrible. So you're traveling like this and you wonder, where's the money? How come the money hasn't shown up? Because <laughs> you haven't given you that space to be that energy of gratitude, the energy of joy, the energy of enthusiasm that actually allows the money in. I love that. And you said something too that like reminded me, like if, if you, um, like a lot of us think we, we have to work for money. What if you asked money to work for you? Like, and this is the same thing with your business. What if you asked your, instead of you being busy <laughs> and, and doing business from that, like I've got to do business. What if you asked the business to work with you? 
And, and while I talked about like being able to receive from everything, that's when you would like wake up in the morning and you're like, business, what do you require from me today? Business, what would you like desire for me to focus on today? Now, it might be that your business says, well, I'd really like for you to take care of your emails or whatever. And often, more often than not, you'll find your business will be like, can we go for a walk? <laughs> and, and I know the logical people out there are going, okay, wait, my business wants me to go for a walk? How is that gonna contribute to my business? <laughs> And then, but if you're willing to follow the awareness that you get from asking the question, business, what do you want me to handle? Those are the times when the magic and the miracles happen. Cause it's like, you suddenly are, um, you're walking and you meet somebody that is a connector or, you know, you just are filled up with this beautiful energy and joy that makes handling everything else that needs to get done that day easeful, right? So you never know how it's going to show up, but it's like, if you're willing to, I find that there's so much more possible that comes from following that energy than doing the, I have to. <laughs> and um, this is the right thing to do. And this is what I should be doing, right? Cool. You're muted. Still. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what I love about this is that most of us, like just picking back on what you just said, like <clears throat> it doesn't make logical sense. The logic is you, the more, the harder you work, the more money you're going to make. Right. Cause the probability of money coming in is only justified when you worked hard. <clears throat> and it's one of the lies of this society and this reality because when you're joyful, like just think of a moment when you were really happy in your life. It didn't matter. You might have just fallen in love with someone or you might have just walked in nature and your body was so happy or, you know, you, your baby was born or whatever it was. Like there was this joy in every part of you and your body. Did you ever even think about money? Money is not usually on our thoughts if we're having fun, if we're creating, if we're expanding our lives, the money is the byproduct. It ends up being this like thing that comes and shows up, but you are this energetic force of bringing other things in play. So anywhere you're focusing on the hard, no, you are a magnet. You magnet, you as the magnet will bring in what you have as a point of view, as your thought, as your mindset. So if your mindset is, I can only receive money if I work hard, all the easy money that wants to come in your life literally has to wait at the door or go bye-bye. <laughs> so you bring all this money to your door and you're like, sorry, stand outside, please. You do not match my hard work yet. <laughs> so I am not able to open this door to you. The door is locked. <laughs> But the minute <laughs> you're like, oh, I have that mindset. That's really cute. Okay. First of all, who does it belong to? Because 99.9% .9 of our thoughts, feelings, emotions, even our intensity, our viewpoints of business or anything else really doesn't belong to us. So when you're willing to actually say, oh, you know what? Okay. Interesting point of view. I have this point of view. And just say it 10 times. Interesting point of view, I have this point of view. Interesting point of view, I have this point of view. What you'll do is you'll start to take away all the places you've made it significant and solid that that's the only point of view you can have. And if you wanna upgrade that a little bit, just say whose lies, what lies, and how many lies am I using to create this and to keep this in place? Mm -hmm. When you do what you do is you'll realize it's all these lies we learned whether we watched parents do it whether we had a teacher who shared it whether it was society and the news or anything else like most of your definitions and the way that you think you have to be in business is not yours and when you let that go you actually invite in your joy your ease and your ability to create with the business that is so off the charts.
And that's really what we're talking about, this whole business done different. It's not based on the rules of what your parents did, but it's you get to create that for you every day. Oh, awesome. Um, let's go ahead and open it up maybe for a couple of questions. Is there anybody out there that has some questions for us? Yeah. Make sure we and we have a lot of Zooms with translation. So if one of the translators also um, sees that there's a question out there, Okay, can I just say one thing? I want to say there was a little girl who was dancing while you were talking, and I was laughing my, you know, what off. Um, and the joy in her body, truly, I adore her. I don't know what her name is. Maybe mom can, uh, yeah. I think it was. Um... Hi, beauty. <laughs> Oh, wait, can you unmute it? Hold on, let me unmute you. There you go. You can talk now. There you go. Hi, Katie. Oh, she's adorable. Well, first of all, she was so cute. She was just dancing. But that's the joy, you know? Like, I'd like to invite us to that joy that you had as a child where everything was just, oh, I'd like to have that. Yeah, thank you so much, mom and dad, for buying it for me. Or I'd like to have that. And just your grandparents brought it to you, you know, or whatever. Like that in business. Like when we're no longer being adults and trying to do it the serious way, that's what grows. So just had to say, because she was dancing and there was so much joy in her body. She was making my body happy, you know. <laughs> Anyone have any questions? See lots of familiar faces here. You can unmute yourself if you have a question and just chime in. Yeah. Cool. Hello. Hi, Beauty. How are you? Actually, for that one, let's see if um, Elena, Elena, can you translate for me? Can you translate for us? Yes, I could. I'm here. Awesome. Thanks, Beauty. Appreciate it. Лалей, здравствуйте. Здравствуйте, все участники. И у меня такой вопрос. Я очень люблю свою работу. Я хореограф, занимаюсь с детьми. Но вот у меня последнее время, как бы, все, я люблю все, но вот... Нет желания. Оно как-то не то, что исчезло, а тяжеловато идет, что ли. Ну, то есть каждый раз я ну, как бы жду, когда закончится репетиция. Как бы жду лето, что ли, а отлично понимаю, что надо еще, ну, как бы работать. И, и как будто сама себя останавливаю. Okay. I will translate now. <laughs> uh, 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 I am, uh, hello everyone. Uh, I am a uh, um, teacher of chore choreography and uh, I work with the kids. And now uh, the time uh, for me is like, I don't have desire. I can't find this desire and uh, somehow I stop myself. Well, I was going to say, what's her question? What should I change and what I don't see here? Okay. Venus, is, do you have something specific or did you want me to? I'm going to meet her just while we're talking. Do you have something specific or do you want me to go ahead? Okay. So one of the things I have to say is that very often when we have been doing something, you know, we've been teaching or we've been selling a particular product or anything else, we go to a place of like, oh my God, I'm so enthusiastic about this. I'm so excited. And then in your head, you do a lot more than what you think you did. 
So we get to a place where it's no longer that fun, motivating kind of energy. It becomes this like, ah, yeah, whatever. Like, like this like maintenance mode of that energy. So if you're willing every single day to do what I was talking about earlier, like everything you've defined what this business is, everything you defined what the job for you is with the kids, and just let it go. Destroy and create all those projections, expectations, decisions, judgments, conclusions you've made about it. And then ask the business, business, who are you today? And what grand and glorious adventures are you going to have? Because then you allow this generative energy of the business to actually shine through. It's no longer based on the things that you think that business was yesterday. And when you let go of those expectations, you let go of all the baggage, all those energies that are just not really useful. And you allow there to be this clean slate, like a white canvas, who's just waiting to just be colored today, you know, to be painted today. And at some point, you also have to look. Are there other things that you and your body would like to add to your life and living? Because sometimes when we made one job or one business be very significant, it's not enough. You remember are this huge being that's infinite. And when you put all your energy in one thing, a lot of times we kill it because <laughs> it's like all this boom in one place. But then when you actually expand you, and your space so you can add on other things, it's no longer a draining energy, but it becomes this generative creative energy. So ask each one of those things like services, products, whatever it is that your business currently has, okay, what possibilities with revenue attached can I add to you today? So like, let's say you said choreography, right? With the kids, right? So ask the choreography business, okay, chore choreography business, don't call it my business. When you call it my business, you're the only one who could feed it. You're the only one who can bring money for it. You're the only one who could pay the bills. But when you call it by its name or call it the business, even if it's your name, you actually allow everything else to contribute to, okay? So that's just a little sideline. So you say, okay, choreography business, hmm, who else would you like to play with today? Mm -hmm. What are new services? What are new products? What is it that you would like to add to you today? Because now you gave that business, that specialty of your business, the job to go find people, to go find other solutions, to find other products, to find other services or anything else and bring it to you. Yeah, and I'll piggyback on that a little bit too. You can, um, another thing you could do is ask, what can I add to bring more fun and money right away? Or what can I add to bring more fun and joy right away? It's like you, most of you on here are probably bored doing just one thing <laughs> and that's when the energy you lose the energy because you you get bored focusing on that so then it's like okay what can I add to bring more fun it could be in that business or it could just be other businesses I know that I have six businesses going on right now I think Lolly has similar <laughs> right so if we have all of these different businesses going on all at the same time then then we don't get bored boredom kills just about everything because it's like well what do i do so so what can you add to bring more fun did you have an, another question i saw you put your finger up so i was just wondering if she yeah go ahead Благодарю. Я как раз сейчас осознала, что э, всегда летом вывозила детей на международные конкурсы, а так как сейчас карантин, у нас это не идет, и поэтому у меня появился стоп. То есть просто задавать вопросы, да? 
Thank you very much. I acknowledge a lot, uh, and uh, I had uh, international um, some um, um, events, and it cancelled because of quarantine. And now I uh, I have the uh, answers. Thank you very much. Thank you. I love that. But do you see how quickly we can take that moment of thinking there's a problem with the business? and flip it 180 degrees and now it's a possibility that could be infinite you know what i mean it's not just one thing that could come out of this but that constant willingness to add to your life and add to the business every day will allow you to keep bringing those generative energies and if you listened to me at least me i know the last 40 minutes i have said generative and creative because that's what you actually, as the being, allows you to live and, and be jolly and, you know, like, it allows you to keep creating. And that's where you also add in money. Money comes from those generative energies that you create. So if you're willing to make it not be linear, to look one way, to only be one way, you then allow a whole new world of ideas to come in. And thank you for that question, because I know we're talking about choreography, but it can apply to any part of your life, whether you're a student, whether you actually have your own business, or whether you work for another company. Wonderful. Thank you. We got that. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Go. <laughs> awesome. Um, anyone else have a question? I do. Joseph does. I can Hi, jump Joseph. In. Hey, hey Lale. How are you doing, buddy? Good. How are you? Oh, I am amazing. Um, I'm really excited for this taster. Thank you for putting it out there. Um, so my question is, uh, you know, it's, it's awesome. The more in the last probably week, um, I've noticed that the more I am grateful for things, the more things show up. And now as of this morning, I was running late because I was like, Oh, I get to go on the taster. And then like, I got like five phone calls in a row from five new guys I'm working with. Who have, I mean, it's just like, I'm like, like, oh my gosh, I got people calling me up and they, I mean, it is, it is the, cr and it's like it's batshit crazy right now. And I'm so grateful for it. So, and it's funny because like my next, my, my question is, is that how do I not, you know, lose my mind during this? And so I'm trying to figure out a way to control it and what I just realized. So, um, so I guess what would, what would be a way I can increase and um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I wish I could transfer the energy what I'm trying to do here with my thought processes, but I'm like, I, I can feel everything expanding and I'm like, okay, how do I keep this up and not, you know, get log mired in the minutia of what's happening? Cool. Um, well, first of all, do you believe that you're a finite being or an infinite being? I'm an infinite being. <laughs> cool. So do you have infinite amount of resources? Do you have infinite amount of energy? Does an infinite being have a finite amount of possibilities? No, but it's been so fun to act finite. <laughs> cool. <laughs> That's a great, great order. Awesome. <laughs> It's right? so fun to say like, oh, but I'm so busy. Oh, it's, it's a, how am I going to do it all? <laughs> so that might be a little bit um, broader term, but look, I can even bring it back to what we talked about in the beginning is like your point of view creates your reality. So if your point of view is that you only have a finite amount of time, you only have a finite amount of energy, you only have a finite amount of resources, then that's what you will keep running into. But if you destroy and uncreate that and let that go, then 
um, you tap into the universal infinite energy that is available for us all. Like, have you ever noticed, like, if you're like doing something that you love to do, like you could do it till four in the morning. You're just like, click, 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 click. Oh, hell yeah. Massive, right? Yeah. Like, massive creation mode. There is no limit, right? But if you're doing something that maybe you don't love so much, <laughs> like how you're like, I'm so tired. <laughs> like, well, I'll put it off till tomorrow or the next day, <laughs> or it'll never have just like, yeah, later. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so everywhere where you're trying to make your business or you fit into a box or a definition of what you've decided it is that it isn't, would you be willing to just come and create that and let that go? Yeah. Good. Awesome. And then what else is possible? So one of the things that we do with access is always asking another question. So if things are not, if things are not going great, you can ask these questions. How does it get better than this? And what else is possible? If things are going great, you can ask these questions. What else is possible? And how does it get better than this? <laughs> because it can always get better. It can always grow. And there's always new possibilities. Always. Because remember, the universe is infinite. So if the world, universe is infinite, then the possibilities are infinite. So if you keep asking those questions, especially when you feel like you're hitting something, you just be like, okay, well, what else is possible here? How does it get better than this? Right? And not judge. And Molly touched on this again, like in the beginning too, like judgment kills gratitude grows. So if you judge anything as wrong, you're killing the possibilities. So can you instead be like, okay, I'm, I've, I've got a lot of phone calls and a lot of things going on right now. And what are the infinite possibilities here? And if I didn't judge it and make it wrong, what else is possible? Hmm. Okay. Cool. Well, I really, would you like to add to that? Emma? Yeah. And that was really cool. Cause like, did you notice how quickly you went from this is a problem to a possibility? I just want to keep bring us back. Cause like when we're right. acknowledging that we're changing things, you allow it to expand and just grow, not just for you. It ends up being for the whole universe and the world. So um, I'm going to keep reminding us of that, even if this short hour we have together. Um, and the other thing that really comes up is like the first thing you said is you're adding more gratitude in your life and you're now noticing how much more your business is growing how much more your your life is growing well when you're in gratitude what you actually are doing is that you're allowing more of that space of you in your life okay so mm -hmm. you're allowing your creativity those generative energies you're actually traveling that energy is traveling at that higher wavelength of, of um, energy, you know? And so what you do is you attract more of that. So when you, like even for your bills, you know, the business, a lot of times I see people kill their businesses because the business is growing and the cost of business goes up. You know, like the, the resources they require, the people they require, all this goes up and they immediately go into judgment of the business. And they want to cut off. But no, what ended up happening is that as your business is growing, some of the costs are also going to go up. And if you're willing to be grateful for everything, every person that contributed, every bill you get, the first thing when you look at it, if you're like, oh my God, I'm so grateful for you. With you, I was able to grow the business. And mm -hmm. you pay that bill from gratitude, more money will show up in your life, okay? Because you're doing it not from the lack energy, which is a lie, which is not you. You are that right. generative gratitude energy. And so you allow money to also come from spherical location, not from one funding resource. And Joseph, what I loved is you said you had like five people calling you, messaging you. Well, that's also your body talking to you and saying, hey, we like having fun and we like juggling more than what we've been juggling. So then you can say, well, how much more space can I add to me? 
How much more space can I add to my body? How much more space can I add to the business? How much more space can I add to my life? And those things that seem like they were all coming at once now have space too. So it goes mm. out of that, I don't know how to handle this, to, oh, all I have to do is, oh, a little bit of here, a little bit of here, a little bit of here, a little bit of here. And then they actually assist each other in their growth. Because mm. things don't usually grow because you did A plus B equals C. It's because 22 over here and A over here and Z over here kind of came together and all their energies contributed to all of them. Right. And then you ask, how does it get even better than this? And what else can I add to my life and living? Because then the more you add, you also add more space. <laughs> okay, I know I blew your mind. That's the whole point. Because earlier you were like, how do I control this with my mind? And your mind right. has nothing to do with it. It's because what you know. But did you notice you're laughing? Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I, it was hilarious. You're talking about being able to multitask. I'm like, and it's funny. I bought into the lie for so many years that I'm a man. I can't multitask. I'm a man. I can't multitask. And it's just like, because I was told that women can multitask and men can't. And like this morning, I'm on two different Zoom calls at the same time. And I'm hearing both of them. Like it was weird. I had, I had a Zoom call going on in front of me for somebody else. I had a Zoom call going on in my ear. And I'm like, I'm present with both. And I was like, and that was the first time I'd ever been able to do that. And I was laughing because I was like, where did this come from? And it was, I'm just like, okay, well, apparently I'm having fun and I'm way more capable than I ever thought. Of. So I think that's the trick right there. When we realize, not that we, we focus on how we've been limiting ourselves, but when you realize, hey, I am so much more. There's so much more to me and my powers, superpowers than I imagine. You actually allow them to grow. Like you said, this is the first time you've had the ability to be present with two things at the same time. But I wonder how many other times in your life you have, but maybe you didn't acknowledge it back then. Right. And ask for more. How does it get even better than that? Because what if you, I've been on three or four Zooms at the same time and who the heck knew that was even possible. But when you have no more restriction, you allow your body and the business to show you what else is possible. That fires me up. <laughs> that, is, that is really where it's like, how does it get better than this? I don't know, but I'm fired up to find out. There you, you know. go. Yeah. So awesome. I'm, I'm so excited for this class. Cool. Thank you so much. Can I tell you guys, are you guys, can I add one more tool in there for you? Okay. So you, you may want to like, and I've been doing this, like I'm in Portugal, I've been quarantined here and trying to figure out what do I want to do? What do my businesses want and all this? I actually started like going back to old fashioned, like paper and starting to talk to the businesses and writing down what the businesses actually desire and visually seeing it. And with each one, I'm asking, okay, what's it gonna take for you to show up? What do you require to physically actualize? And will you bring in the resources and the funds that are already, uh, that can contribute to you actualizing and thriving? Because you want it to continue to go beyond you creating it. And so when you were chatting, you were smiling, you were laughing. Are you willing to allow one of the revenue streams into your life and into the business be that people pay you to smile? Yeah. Okay, cool. So anything that doesn't allow that, will you like toss it out the door and destroy it and create all of it? Sit down. <laughs> awesome, cool. <laughs> yeah, because it's just one of those things like, what if there's nothing? What if you could be sleeping and you would allow you and the business to just keep bringing in the revenue, just bringing in the money. I love that. So it does not all about me and what I'm doing. It's who can no. I do? That's what you're being and the joy you have will pull it in. Like I went and got my nails done after two months. I mean, this is torture. Quarantine <laughs> alone is not the torture. Not getting my nails done was torture. And it is, my business invites me to go get my nails done all the time. And when I do, I, the nail place 
always booms. Like they're like, I don't know, every time you come after you, there's more clients, you know, they can't explain, it is. It's so like, what is it for you that truly brings your body joy? That if you add more of that to your life would exponentialize all your revenue streams for you, your life and the businesses. And anything that doesn't allow you to be, know, perceive, receive, and have the awareness of that, will you let that go? Yeah. By the way, that's all of you, not just him. <laughs> Including I'll me. Take it though. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Thank you, Joseph. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, Lolly, there's a question in the chat. You want to, I can read it. You know, um, I have problems with the word work. I don't know why, but I feel so bad when I say I have to work. It's very heavy. One of my business people say it's serious business. You have to treat it like serious business. I just want to have fun. And people say, if you do different, I will not succeed. And now I feel stuck. Thank you for your question, Erica. You want to end that follow? Well, I'm curious if, if things change, because I read her question. Mm -hmm. And I wondered through this conversation that we had with Joseph, did anything change in her world? Where is that beautiful Erica? I don't see her visually here. Where are you hiding? Un un unmute. Let's see. Oh, there you are. Hi, gorgeous. You want to unmute? Hi. Hey, how are you? <laughs> Good, and you? Good. So did anything change while we were having that conversation? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And you're going to hear that. This world and the way people function is business is ugly. People are there in competition. You have to give the lowest prices. Otherwise, people won't come. Your work has to be difficult. And all these lies that come with what a business is. And you have to find what's the truth for you. Yeah. Because when you are willing to be you and you're willing to actually allow you to shine and communicate with your business, you will find you and the business together have this collaborative generative energy that is unstoppable. But when you're trying to do business like somebody else, it's like, you know, that round peg in a square hole or whatever, whatever it's called. I always mix those things up. But like when you have something round and you have a square, they don't fit into each other. But that's what we try to do. We try to have a business like somebody else, but we're the round and they're the square and the two don't go together. So you have to find what is that for you and your business? And that thing that brings you joy, follow it. It will always guide you to more. And like Joseph said, I, I, this one I have to use this clearing because I'm a control freak too. And I've realized it's one of my superpowers. So as long as I don't think it's a wrongness, like I end up using it to, to create greater. But it's what energy, space, consciousness, and choice can you, your body, and business be? to be out of control, out of form, structure and significance, out of linearity, out of concentricity, and I add in there, out of stratification and reference point that you truly be. And anything that doesn't allow that, will you just let it go and just destroy it and create all of it? Amazing. Wow. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> do it really is stratification is how you try to fit in to everybody else society your family your business like it's all these rules and regulations and then the reference points is these old energies these old viewpoints that you don't need anymore so when you let all those go you're allowing you to actually allow the business to grow with you and it might grow your life and your finances too but i don't think you want all of that probably yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and Lolly said it a couple times, guys, and you can do this for every single thing in your life. It could be for your business, money, relationships, anything. If this was not a problem, what possibility could it be? And just asking that question for every thought, feeling, emotion, problem that you think you have, 
you will start to see how much the universe has your back and everything is working out in your favor because everything is a possibility even if it's in disguise so um Venus, I love that. I got to piggyback one more tool on there. And I know we've given you guys a lot of tools, but let me give you one more. <laughs> um, that whole thing that, you know, the universe has your back and the problem versus the possibilities. Like even today, something came up in my world. And if I really wanted to like go into this craziness of this world, I could have made it be the snowball <laughs> of a problem. Like it was this little, little grain of a problem. I could have made it huge. And the first thing I went with the joy business tools was what is right about this? I'm not getting because immediately you stop your mind from going into the monkey mind and giving you every worst case scenario. Instead, you actually invite that information from the universe. And really, it's not about being right or wrong or good or bad, but it's the willingness not to go into the wrongness of it, into the judgments of it. Because judgments kill, like Venus said earlier, any energy you've generated for now in the future, it kills it when you go into judgment. But when you go into gratitude, even the most difficult, complex problem has the ability to become a generative energy to create something greater. And this, what's right about this at that moment makes no sense. It's not about logic. But if you let it go and go do something, walk in nature, go pet your dog, go do whatever makes you happy, have a chocolate, whatever that is, and then you'll realize Oh my God, just by me not making this be a problem, I have so many opportunities and possibilities that just came out of this. But at that moment, it just may not feel that way. But if you give it a chance, it can be. So what futures have you generated, created, changed, and actualized that you haven't yet acknowledged? And if you were willing to just acknowledge it, claim it and own it, would actually bring you everything you've ever desired to bring into your life and into the business and more. And anything that doesn't allow that, can we destroy and create all that? I wrong getting back on back on my shorts, boys. Oh, I, I apologize on time. We got to go. Our translators, we have a few that actually needed to jump off early. I am so sorry, but thank you all for being here today. <laughs> Yeah, and if you guys like this and it was fun for you, we're doing a business done different. We're doing it over five days, three hours a day, starting on June 7th. So we'd love to have you over there to play with us. It's gonna be super, super fun. Thank you so much, all the translators and everyone that came to contribute today. Um, we adored having you. So have a wonderful day. Thank Bye. you, everyone.